In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how Airbnb got their first 600 customers so you can do the same. Our team did weeks of research on their backstory, and I was surprised to learn about butt covers, their first three customers, and how they initially gave up on the business after an impressive validation. If you're thinking of starting your own company, or if you're in the early stages of starting a business, this video is going to help you get your company off the ground. What does it take to start a multi-billion dollar company with customers and service providers? We all know Airbnb. It has an estimated value of well over $20 billion and about 150 million users today. But how did they actually get their first customers? Part one, the origin story. How the idea for Airbnb originated. Two buddies from college, Joe Gebbia and Brian Chesky, moved in together into an apartment in San Francisco and their landlord, mean landlord, raised their rent on them by 25%. So problem one, their rent went up by 25% and neither of them had a job. Problem number two, they noticed this industrial design conference in San Francisco and all the hotels in San Francisco were sold out. So the solution to the, both those problems was the Air Bed and Breakfast, the original name of their website. So they put together a simple website in under 24 hours with pictures of their living room, yes, their living room, and a brief description of the service. Here's the link to the Wayback Machine for a copy on their website. It's not really well designed. They got three air mattresses for their living room, offering each for $80 a bed on their website. So how did they market the website and get those customers? They emailed design blogs that were covering the conference. And to their surprise, they got coverage from a couple of design websites. This was within 48 hours after they got the idea. They sold out the three airbeds and guests were delighted by the experience. Random side note, one of the first guests, they got invited to their, his wedding a couple of years later. The concept was validated. The design websites were excited enough to talk about it. They got their first dollars and more people were emailing them about getting the service in other cities. Can you stretch your finger for me, by the way, and hit that like button if you found this interesting so far and want more videos like this? Takeaways part one. What business lessons did we learn so far? Number one, every business starts with a problem. Brian and Joe's problem was that they needed to make rent, but they didn't have any income. They also noticed a problem where people in their ecosystem were having a tough time finding a place to stay in San Francisco. They came up with a creative solution to solve both of those problems, and that's how they came up with the idea for Airbnb. That's all businesses. It's a problem and a solution that you provide that people are excited to pay you for. So the action item for you, keep a list of problems, your problems or other people's, and whenever you have a moment in your day, think of ways to come up with a creative solution to those problems. Maybe it's your landscaping, maybe it's cleaning up, maybe it's some software service, maybe it's canceling your AT&T bill, whatever it is, make a list of those. Number two, stop thinking about your idea and test it as soon as possible. So it took Brian and Joe 24 hours to create the prototype for Airbnb and they weren't even coders. Always remember customer first validation. You don't need a domain, you don't need press, you don't need fancy marketing plans. Those are excuses. Keep it simple. Why is this important? You don't want to waste any more time on a product or service that no one wants. And the faster you fail, the faster you will find the right solution to the problem. So the action item for you is if you have a business idea in mind, commit to testing it by the end of this week. What is your version of the air bits? It might seem daunting, but setting that deadline will force you to stop overthinking and take action. Commit in the comments to the action you're going to take right now. Number three, craft a story for your customers. So the Airbnb story, two designers create a new way of connecting at this year's IDSA conference. The reality, it was two dudes that needed to pay rent and were renting air mattresses in their living room. They weren't lying. Both versions are true. Just saying it in the first way is way more sexy. No one wants to sleep on two broke dudes air mattresses, but most would find it adventurous to connect in a new way. The result is the story they were telling got them featured in design magazines and got them their first customers. So the action item for you is think of your marketing story. How can you create an exciting story that your target customers would get excited about? Part two, more validation and learning. So the Airbnb story continued. This is crazy. So at this point, they actually abandoned the idea for a couple of months to work on another idea to help people find roommates. But then they found out that apartments.com already existed. So they left their original idea, which is wild. And so maybe a takeaway from there is that if you found a truly good idea, it will keep showing up and you won't be able to stop thinking about it. Also, try to create ideas where you don't have any competition or you're not really worried about any competition. So now that they had their idea and they went back to Airbnb, their first launch was an epic fail. So when they picked the idea back up, they recruited Joe's ex-roommate, Nate Blajachowski, sorry Nate, who was a programmer. The next big conference was South by Southwest here in Austin, Texas in 2008. The only problem, it was two weeks away. So within two weeks, they put together V2 of their website and tried to get people to sign up for it. The two week time limit was probably a good thing. It forced them not to overthink it. So limit your time and money, again, whenever possible when validating your business idea. 
They only got five hosts and two reservations. One of the reservations was Brian, who was one of the founders. It was a big failure, but they learned two gigantic lessons. Number one, maybe conferences is too small of a niche, and they actually transitioned to vacation rentals. So they just positioned it a little bit differently, which I love. And number two, have people pay online instead of in person because it's awkward. And it also enables a small transaction fee, which is their business model was born. So now let's go into the second law. The opportunity, 2008 Democratic National Convention in Denver, Colorado. The venue has moved from a basketball arena of 20,000 seats to Invesco Stadium with 100,000 seats. But Denver only has 20,000 hotel rooms, mostly already taken up by the delegates. So the shortage of places to stay equaled a great opportunity for Airbnb. So how did they get attention and customers for their website? They started contacting big news outlets like CNN, who wasn't interested. But then they contacted local bloggers and those bloggers wrote about it. So the thing to think about is they planted the seed of small blogs, which then led to CNN and The Guardian and major outlets later covering them. They had over 600 people staying at Airbnbs that weekend. Takeaways part two, they're just as critical in the success of Airbnb getting their first 600 customers. Number four, they started looking for co-founders before they needed them. So when Joe was in college, he kept a list of people he thought were great co-founders, even though he didn't have any businesses to work on yet. And I think that's an amazing idea. He knew his ex-roommate Nate Bliachowski would be a great technical co-founder if he ever needed someone. The action item for you to think about here is who are people in your social network that you think are really smart or good at what they do? If you're not friends with them yet, go make an intentional effort to develop that relationship. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. We put out juicy business videos just like this and exclusive office hours every single week only for subscribers. Number five. Fail fast and iterate your product based on lessons learned. So their first launch is another example of how they set deadlines for themselves to fail fast. And that launch was indeed a failure, but they learned valuable lessons which allowed them to come back with a better product. So once you have failed, now just figure out, okay, what do I stop doing and what do I need to continue doing? So at South by Southwest, there wasn't hotel shortages. At Denver and vacation rentals, there were. Next up, they started as a housing website for conferences. Today, they're a vacation rental, so you have to notice what people are demanding of you. You know what else they did later? They organized meetup with customers to learn more about the experience of Airbnb users and owners. They never stopped learning. So there's a bunch of pictures of them visiting Airbnb people all around America. So the action item for you here is if you failed recently, make sure you journal and reflect on what happened. It's not the failing that brings results, it's the reflection. And secondly, if you've passed the validation phase, this doesn't mean you shouldn't keep testing. Set experiments and deadlines for your business in order to find out how to make your product better. Number six, try out different marketing channels, but when you find one that works, 10X on it, on it. Make a list of marketing channels and commit to trying each one with a small experiment. So for Airbnb, they tried getting PR coverage from big outlets, but they were getting turned down. So it went back to what worked for them, small local blogs. So the action item for you is as you are starting your business, try out a bunch of marketing channels. Think of it like the marketing buffet. And then when you find any one that works, 10X down on that specific channel and reduce your time on the other ones. Part three, making it big. So by the end of summer 2008, they were $25,000 in credit card debt. They literally had a collector's book with about 20 credit cards in it. So they needed to come up with some money fast. After the convention, they had an idea. They bought a bunch of cereal and designed a special edition election theme box released that fall. Obama O's and Cap'n McCain's, which they sold at a convention parties for $40 a box. They sold 500 boxes of each cereal, helping them raise about $30,000 for air, bed, and breakfast. The press ate it up. Pun intended. Obama O's especially sold out in three days, after which people started reselling them on eBay and Craigslist for as much as $350 a box. They were able to get on CNN to talk about the cereal, and they sold out of Obama O's after that. They even put together a little jingle for each cereal. Unfortunately, their story wasn't over. Attention died down shortly after. Press is generally short-lived. They still only made less than $5,000 from Air Bed and Breakfast, and somewhere between $20,000 and $30,000 selling random ass cereal boxes. They continue to have no money. Brian, one of the founders, lost 20 pounds over the course of the year. And for the next few months, they lived off the dry Cap'n McCain's cereal. Even milk was too expensive. They somehow got an interview at Y Combinator, but started bombing it. Paul Graham, the founder, and the rest of the YC were asking some really tough questions, and they just thought it, the idea was crazy. Letting strangers live in your home? It was at that point that Joe pulled out a box of Obama O's and handed them to Paul and explained this is how they had bootstrapped their company. Paul said, wow, you guys are like cockroaches. You just won't die. 
He later gave them an offer. He said, if you can convince people to pay $40 for a box of cereal, you can probably convince people to sleep in other people's airbeds. Just maybe you can do it. They got $20,000 in seed funding that came with admission in return for a 6% stake in their company and started at YC January 6, 2009. The rest is history. Three years later, Airbnb was in 89 countries, had hit 1 million nights booked on the platform, and was valued at more than $1 billion after receiving funding from Silicon Valley's most prominent venture capital firms. Their firm is currently considering an IPO and is valued at more than $30 billion. So take away part three, leverage your strengths to make extra cash on the side. Understand that while you're getting started, you may be broke for a while and they leveraged the skills they did have in design. They went to a design school for college to make extra cash and you need to have oxygen or it will be really challenging to pursue your business idea. What does that mean? If you're always thinking about how to pay the bills, it's really hard to be creative or take risks. When I started AppSumo.com, which is now an eight figure business, I was doing product marketing consulting for speeddate.com to finance this business. So the action item for you is what skills do you already have that you can leverage in your current business or on the side to make money to get you get going? So what skills do you already have that you can leverage in your current startup or as side cash to get money for your business? Maybe that means keeping your day job while you're starting your company and working on it nights and weekends. Or you can do consulting just like I did. But assume you're not gonna make money from your business for at least a while. I think it takes about a year to make $1,000 a month is what I've seen for many, many people. Number eight, if your business is truly revolutionary, it will be considered crazy and don't let that stop you. These guys didn't have an overnight success. There was actually failure, failure, failure. Oh, something's working. And they kept persisting on it 10 years to finally get to the level that they're at now. So they even had some comments where this person said, this is a typical echo chamber thinking. Do people get robbed, abused, raped, murdered using these kinds of services? So a lot of things seem crazy at first until they don't. So think about it, 20 years ago, who would have imagined letting strangers crash in your home? There's many liabilities. Even Uber was the same way. I'm gonna get into a stranger's car, but if your idea was common and everyone already knows about it, there wouldn't be an opportunity for you. We covered a lot of ground in this video, so let's recap the key lessons you can apply on your business journey. Number one, every business starts with a problem. Number two, stop thinking about your idea and test it ASAP. Number three, craft a story for your customers. Four, start looking for co-founders before you need them. Five, Fail fast and iterate your product based on the lessons you've learned. Six, try out different marketing channels, but when you find the one that works, 10x down on it. Seven, leverage your strengths to make some extra cash on the side. And number eight, if your business is truly revolutionary, it will be considered crazy. Don't let that stop you. If you're looking for more help on your business journey, check out the video above that'll help you out. As well, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a future episode. I love you and I'll see you out there. Pew, pew.